Hello, my name is Kirsty. Welcome to Kirsty Knits and Sews. This is my little podcast where I tell you all the things that I have been making. Today I have knitting. I have... Actually, it's all knitting. I don't have any spinning or crochet today. I have knitting to show you. I have finishes. I have whips. I'm going to talk a little bit about my coming up making plans. Also, advents that I am doing or have or plan to do. And I thought I would also talk a little bit about Vlogmas and something that I'm going to try a little bit different this year slash next year about that. And I also have a giveaway winner to announce and some stats to go through. So it's going to be a pretty busy episode and I am on a time limit for recording because I need to go pick up my daughter in just over an hour. So we'll see how we go with getting through all of these things today. But first of all, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to all the new people. I think over the last month we've had quite a few new people join. So if that's you, so glad that you're here. Um, and obviously the people who've been here for a long time, I'm really glad you're here too. And I've really loved reading all the comments last episode about what you've been making. And yeah, also thank you for all the advice about the jumper that I have. I think it's still up here, this one here. Um, the sea glass sweater that needs repairs. I haven't repaired it yet, but I have started working on other mending things that I have waiting and I've currently mended three things. So I'm getting there, getting through the mending. We might talk about that later too, actually. Oh no, it's, it's already on my list of things to mention. I'm on it. So I, uh, I'll do stats quickly and then I'll get going on finished objects. I will do the giveaway winner up front. So I, before I got on here, I did one of those random comment pickers, took a screenshot. So I'll put the screenshot up on this side because there's room. And the winner is Tasha Shedletsky. So Tash, if you uh, get in contact with me, let me know your shipping address. I will get your prize shipped out to you. The prize is this beautiful mug, which matches the one that I'm using today because I love it so much. I bought one for me and one for a giveaway. Um, so this beautiful mug that has a beautiful knit pattern on it, some opal yarn and some stitch markers. Um, so yeah, send me your address, shipping address, and I'll send that to you. Um, Tasha is, um, I actually know her. We, did a few things online together during lockdown and I got to meet her in real life in person for the first time this year at a dear friend's wedding and we bonded over socks we bonded online over knitting um, but in real life at the wedding I brought socks to work on and felt a little bit self-conscious but also knew that I'd be sitting for a while waiting for the ceremony to start so hadn't really had a problem with it and she looked at me and said oh my husband told me to bring my socks in and I told him that it wasn't that like no one else would be doing it. It would be weird. Um, and so then at the reception, she brought hers and I left mine in the car. And so then I went back out to the car and got mine and brought them into the reception. And so we, we were just sock knitting buddies all day. It was great. Anyway, so congratulations, Tash. Um, now I'm getting self-conscious. Tash, Tasha, Tashi. No. Anyway, congratulations. <laughs> um, all right, let's go through some stats because I, I'm keeping track of things in this book that I made myself and I realized, I didn't make the book, I did the layout myself. Um, I realized someone commented on the last episode asking about keeping a knitting journal. And I don't think I responded to that part of your question. I know I responded to some other things that you said in the comment. Um, but I'm wondering, I need to make up my next year's version of this. And I'll probably try and do that either in November or early December. Um, would you be interested in some kind of video about how I do that? I do have some stamps and things to make it a bit more streamlined. But I could do that for you in case anyone's interested in doing something like this yourself. Um, I'll show you December's page because that's still empty. This is my basic layout 
for every every month. So I just have skeins in, skeins out, um, projects, yarn, start date, end date, how many grams I use, and at the bottom I keep track of stats for how many skeins in and out, finished objects, unfinished objects, and grams used. Um, it'll probably be pretty similar next year, except that I'm hoping to embellish it a little bit more with stickers and design. This year it was just wanting to figure out a layout that worked for me. Um, and then I have like an overall yarn usage for the year page. Um, and I haven't done it yet, but I want to then write up a, a list of what I've made this year so I can tally that up as well. Um, so I don't know if it's going to be vastly different next year to what it is this year. I did start off with extra bits and pieces that I didn't continue with because I didn't use them. Um, yeah, anyway, if that's something that you're interested, I might at least record a little bit of how I've been doing that as I get next year's ready. Um, but I just wanted to show you last month. I only finished two things for October, and that was two muscle burrows. So I used less than 200 grams of yarn. According to skeins, I used 200 grams out of my stash, and I brought in 100 grams. I brought in one skein. I didn't buy it. It was a... I, I guess I did buy it. It was a reward for, I think, reading a book in Polish. I reward myself for things that I need to do that I'm finding difficult. And this reward was a skein of yarn. It was great. Um, but notably, I did go over the 10,000 gram mark last month. So I have officially used more than 10,000 grams. That's 10 kilograms, 10,000 grams of yarn this year. And that is actual usage. That's not skeins out. Um, and the... The difference, if you're new here, is that I track any skeins that are used up, um, that are under 50 grams, I count that as a skein used up. So if I get down to 48 grams, I'll still count that as a skein used up, and I'll put that 48 grams into stash. So when I'm counting skeins, I'm counting skeins that started at more than 50 grams that are now less than 50 grams, usually 50 gram balls or 100 gram balls. Um, and then when I'm counting actual grams, I'm counting every single thing that goes into the garment or the project. So that will include scraps, that will include full skeins, partial skeins, scraps, minis, everything. And I just wanted to know whether it was comparable. It's similar, maybe grams is a little bit ahead of skeins. But anyway, I just thought that was interesting. So yeah, I've used 10 kilograms of yarn this year. I have bought more than that. But I've used 10 and I'm excited for what is coming next. I'm excited to use things, which I will talk about in a little bit. So there you go. November, I started off in the first two days using almost 500 grams. And this is where my tracking gets a little bit tricky because I knit most of it in October, but I finished it in November. And so it counts towards November stats, which is why October was so low. It's not that I didn't knit. It's that I just hadn't finished the project that used most of my time. Speaking of, let's show you that project. This is in a bag that I made myself. Um, I think it's Achfachten Fabric, which is a German brand. And I don't remember the name of the designer, but I love it. Look at those little squirrels, gnomes, hedgehogs. So cute. Um, and this, oh, before I show you that, I will just show you what I'm wearing. This is my, it's by Sosu Knits, and it is her Shoe Sweet Shrug. It is a brioche cardigan, um, open front cardigan. Um, it's kind of like a poncho, but with an open poncho cardigan, maybe. Um, the sleeves, everything is brioche, but the sleeves are one color brioche and everything else is two color brioche. Um, it is basically a shawl that has sleeves. It's great. I wear this a lot 
in the cooler weather because I find that it around the house it doesn't fall off the way a shawl might and it gives me a lot more flexibility with my hands. Um, I do not like wearing it under jackets because it just bunches and is not comfortable. But around the house, love it. In the cooler weather, sorry, the warmer weather, I wore it out. But at the moment, we are sitting around, oh, there you go, it says three degrees at the moment. We've been sitting quite low on the degrees. And so it's now cold enough that I need to bundle up properly to go outside. Um, but yeah, she's sweet shrug. I will link project page for this and anything else I talk about down below. Um, and the yarn I used for this, the blue, I think it's an organic merino. Uh, it was dyed by Daffodil Road Yarn. Blue Wren colorway maybe. Um, blue J. Blue something colorway. Um, and then the other side is yarn that I dyed myself. And it is two different dye, two different colors. So this is one color and you can see here the change. That's the second color. Um, just dyed myself. I dye for fun. I don't sell what I dye. So not repeatable, but I dyed it. I think they were actually some of the first skeins that I ever dyed and I absolutely love them. So how special is that? All right, now my finished object. My first finish of the month was my GoGo -Go Dynamo Make Along. And I have to admit, the ends are not completely woven in and I have not blocked it. I will do that, I will show you again once it's completely blocked, but I probably won't talk about it again when I do that. So let me show you the shawl. It's huge and I love that. All right, go, go Dynamo. If you've been following along with me, sorry, I have blocks around me. I'm sitting on the floor, sewing desk behind me, kids are in this way and the toys have spread. Um, okay, go, go Dynamo. It is a four week mystery knit along, which means that you know you're making a shawl, you know what, um, how many colors and how many skeins you need, what needles you need, and that's it. And every week, something is released. So clue one were these, um, this section along here and included the first row of baubles. So that was clue one. Clue two was brioche bobble, brioche bobble. Clue three were the triangles down here. And then clue four, we came up and filled in this section up here and added, if you wanted to, a wavy border down the bottom. When I showed this last, I'd finished the top section and I had, I think, just one of the yellow sections done down the bottom. So let me, uh, the pattern is by Stephen West of West Knits and Stephen and Penelope is the yarn shop. West Knits is the rubbery shop, I believe. Um, the yarn I used is mostly hand dyed. So the green and the amber goldy color are both hand dyed, but I did use a mohair. This is Gazelle Super Kid Mohair, which is 22% polymid, 31% Super Wash Merino, and 47% Super Kid Mohair. Uh, I ended up using one and a half balls. Each ball is 25 grams. So I ended up using about one and a half balls for the shawl. And I did not do it as Stephen suggested in the pattern. So let me talk you through what I did. I started obviously with the pattern as planned. When I got to this section, I wanted to start to mute the gold because I wanted, to be, wanted it to lean toward green with bits of gold rather than equally green and gold. If you don't know, green and gold are the Australian sports colors and I'm Australian. And so I was looking at this and just going, that just looks like sports colors. And some schools in Australia have these colours as their schools as well. But mostly I was reading sports colours. And I wanted to move away from sports colours into, you know, something I would wear. Um, although I could totally wear this to support Australia at any international sports, really. Um, so when I got to the brioche, I, on the advice of my sister, thanks Mel, I held the mohair double with... 
Is it still in here? Yeah. So I held it double with the gold. And what that did was to mute the gold. If I show you the other side, it's more clear. Um, so it muted the gold. So if it hadn't been held double, these lines here would be the same as that one there. So you can see the difference in colour. Um, I was very happy with how that worked. And so when I came down and did the triangles, I did the same thing. I held it double with the contrast colour. Um, now, Stephen did suggest holding it double with the contrast colour, but he suggested doing that if it matched the contrast colour. Um, and so what I did was I essentially mulled the, the gold with the mohair to get a softer colour here. Uh, and then I didn't put any mohair in the top. I mentioned last time that I was concerned about the weight of the shawl hanging on the mohair, and so I didn't want to do kind of one strand in here. Someone asked me about that because they were concerned, because they wanted to use it. Um, and I will just clarify, I was thinking of using a single strand of mohair. And they were thinking of using a double, and I don't think that would be an issue. Mohair, this mohair is fingering, is sorry, lace weight. So it's very, very, very fine. Um, but it also doesn't have any silk in it. It is, I mean, it's got polyamide nylon, which is stronger. Um, but it it is very I'm not gonna say fragile, but it does break much easier than the fingering weight that I have. If I held it double, I would have had no qualms, but I didn't want to use too much of it because it a I, I may have taken this from another project that I have waiting to cast on. Um, and I'll probably need to get another ball anyway because I did use one and a half, but I didn't want to use lots and lots of this if I didn't need to. Um, and I also didn't want it to be too thick or anything like that. In the end, I decided to just for this top bit hold my normal two colours. And because they're smaller sections, it does um, in some ways mute it by itself. But when I got to the end, I didn't have enough to do the border. So what I did for the border is I held the mohair for the main colour. Um, and because it's only a little bit, I held it single. And I'm not at all worried about that breaking unless it gets caught on something, obviously, then it might snap. But from the weight of that, it's not going to break. Um, and so I did still the contrast colour first, the main colour second, um, but I did the main colour in the mohair. And then to finish it off, I did the border. And I did the border, sorry, not just the border. I did the final stripe and the green in the border with my main colour and contra and main colour and mohair held together. Um, because I didn't want to go from having mohair in these two sections to not having mohair in the final section, but I also didn't want to put the eye cord bind off onto a mohair section. If you used it for the contrast colour, it wouldn't have been an issue, but because I was using it for the main colour, it would have been. So I yeah, I did two rows of just mohair, I did a final row of mohair and main colour. And then I cast off eye cord bind off with contrast colour and then main colour held with the mohair. Hope that all makes sense. Um, and I did a two colour bind off. That wasn't in the pattern, that was added because I did not have enough yarn. So I will show you what I have left over. I think it's like five grams and seven grams. Um, which means I may have had enough. But I wasn't sure, and I wasn't going to risk it. And I actually, again, I know it adds more yellow back in. Oh, no, it's less, because it was originally going to be entirely in the contrast colour. So it, again, adds less of the contrast colour and brings it over a little bit to the green side. But I actually love that detail. So there you go. That is my shawl. I really love this. It is so warm. I am looking forward to having it blocked and being able to wear it. I'm not looking forward to sewing the ends in, but I'll show you. Like, there's not that many ends, and all of the ones for these triangles where there were some, I didn't break the main colour the whole way through. I did break the contrast colour, but I also did the weave and steepen. So most of them are already sewn in. 
Um, so it's not going to take too long to actually sew them in. I just haven't done it. I just haven't. Normally, I finish a project and I sew them in straight away. But there is one other thing about this project. I kept up with it. It's the first time Stephen has done a make-along that I kept up with. Oh, I will say I did a 3.75 millimeter needle instead of the 3.5 millimeter that the pattern calls for. I did that because typically my gauge is much tighter than Stephen's and I always have so much yarn left over. So I went looser, I didn't do a gauge swatch. I suspect my gauge was looser than his this time because I ran out of yarn or I would have run out of yarn if I hadn't used the mohair where I did down here. Um, so anyway, just a little note. I don't know if his gauge has changed or mine has changed or if it's just the nature of this pattern, but I did not have heaps of leftover yarn this time. Um, but I had been doing, I cast it on and then I'd been doing weekly catch ups with my mum and my sister and another couple of friends who previously have done his shawls. This time it was just me and my sister doing it. Uh, but we had a weekly catch up and it was, the pattern would be released and like a few minutes later we would have our Zoom. And on the Zoom on the final day, so I'd given up, I was like, I'm not going to get this finished. Um, that's fine. I'm going to work on some other things. And then the final catch up, my sister said, is this the closest you've come to finishing one of his shawls on time? And I say on time because he says, embrace your own pace. It's not a race. You don't have to get it done in the four weeks. Take your time. But it was the kind of the final day of the make along, if you will. And I realized that it was. I have never been close to finishing it on time before. And I decided to give it a go. And so I put aside any other making plans I had that day and I focused on getting this done. Now, when she said that, I was somewhere in here. Like I was maybe had two rows and the bind off to go. Like I was not far away, um, but each row had over 600 stitches and it took some time. Um, I also, like she said that around midday, but I still had normal life things that I had to do. I couldn't just sit and sew for the rest of the day. So, sorry, sit and knit for the rest of the day. So. That night I sat down and I worked on it and I worked on it and my alarm went off to go to bed and I finished the final color and was up to the R cord bind off. And I messaged this group of girls and I said, look, I'm up to the I cord bind off. How long can it take to do an I cord bind off for over 600 stitches? Like seriously, how long? Because it's bedtime. I should go to bed, but I also want to see if I can finish this today because it was the last day of October as well. And I thought if I finish it in October, then all of the stats count towards October. Um, I finish it in the month of the make along. I finish it on the last day of the make along. Like everything was just like going to be tied nicely in a little bow. And one of my friends um, messaged back saying, well, think about it, you know, do 10 minutes, see how much you get done. See if you can finish it in, like before midnight, and if you can, stay up and do it. I was like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Anyway, it was a race against the clock. Uh, I didn't finish it. I think I did half of it that night, and I looked at the time, and I was like, there's no way I'm going to finish it before midnight. Um, I think by that point it was 20 past 11, so I had 40 minutes left to do the other half, so 300 stitches I could bind off. wasn't going to happen. I was getting quicker, but I wasn't that quick. And because it's the two color, it also takes longer because you have to drop, pick up, you know, turn them around each other so that the yarn is being carried in the middle, not along the outside. Um, yeah, all in all, wasn't going to make it. So I messaged the girls at that point and said, look, I'm going to bed. I'll talk to you later. Um, and then I don't know. Yeah, I did. I finished it the next day. I had given up. I wasn't planning to, but by that point I was so close that I did end up finishing it on the 1st of November. Um, so all in all, it is 424 grams and I started on the 3rd of October and finished it on the 1st of November. So it was still knit within a month, which I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, but I didn't finish it in October during the make along. 
that's okay. But I think that might also be why it's not actually sewn in and blocked yet, because I pushed myself, I didn't make it, and then I was like, right, it's finished, it can go in a bag and wait. And there it waits. My sister is using the same colours, and so I'm going to send her my tiny little scrappy leftovers in case she needs a few more grams to finish her large border, because she doesn't have the mohair in hers. All right, that was my first finish of November. Uh, the second thing I finished were socks. So after I finished that, I had so much motivation to get going on socks. Uh, these ones, I had one finished last time. I managed to finish the second one in not very long. So I finished these on the 2nd of November. Um, and these are the, I call them the sunset socks. They are vanilla socks on nine inch circular by Cave the Crazy Sock Lady. That's the pattern. The yarn is hand dyed by me. Um, and I call them sunset because the purples and pinks in here were exactly the colors of the sunset the night that I started them. And so that's what they remind me of. Uh, they are size medium 64 stitches. I did them on 2.25 millimeter needles, nine inch circular. I usually do 2.5 for socks, but for nine inch, my gauge gets bigger. So I go down a size and yeah, these ones are going to my sister as well. She is going to be giving them as a gift to someone in her church, I believe. Um, the, yeah, she sent me two skeins of yarn and I'm knitting her two pairs of socks, but I started knitting the socks before I got the yarn. So I'm knitting out of what I had and she has sent me two skeins of yarn. Thanks to replace. Um, yeah, love them. After that, I got going on my next, actually, no, I finished, didn't finish that next. The next thing I finished was a muscle bra. Uh, this is the beanie that the Muscle Wearer Hat by Isolde Teague. Um, this is a size adult large, but I knit to the length of an adult medium. My gauge is seven stitches per inch, and so I follow the pattern exactly. This is made out of scraps. I did finish it in time to enter it into this um, Monster Muscle Wearer Knit Along, but I completely forgot to do that, and that's fine. Um, but this is it. These are all scraps from Zalba Ball Crazy. Um, and the muscle bar is a long tube that you knit and then fold it in half. However, I ran out of scraps. So Zalba Ball Crazy, I had knit my father socks out of this colorway, this colorway, and this colorway. And then I ran out. I do have more scraps from Zalba Ball Crazy. I believe I still have them, but I also think they're, like, I don't have them with me here. They're on the way. They're in a box, but I don't have them with me here. And so I had to find something to finish it off with. And I did not have any more full balls of Zabba Ball Crazy either. Uh, so I picked up this one, which is an opal. Oh, yep, there it is. Uh, this is an opal yarn that I bought couldn't tell you what the name is. I don't have the tag, I don't think. Um, but I bought this yarn a while ago and I've used some of it in a jumper. Um, I still have just over 50 grams left, so it's not taken out of my stash yet. Um, but because it is, um, it's a three ply yarn and one ply is black, it gives that mild effect uh, while also having a bit of a gradient. And so I thought that would be a good one to finish it off because then you still have kind of that mild effect and a gradient. Um, I thought if I just put in one solid color, it would look a little weird. And if I put in a gradient without a mild effect, it would look a little weird. Um, I could have done, no, I couldn't have. I was going to say I could have done a mild effect by holding things double, but I would have had to have held lace weight double. And I didn't have lace weight. So I think this was the best option. Um, and so my dad, if I... So long tube, flip one side inside the other, and that's how you get the hat. And then you can wear it just like that, or you can flip the brim up. 
Um, so my dad will have that as an option. Or if you flip it the other way around, you can wear it like that and have it saggy. Or that as an option. So he'll have four different hats that he can wear. Um, and that's what it looks like on. So yeah, even as like not having the same yarn on that side, I still think it works. And then the other side, it looks like this. Cool. My dad is an artist. He paints trees and he does it on location. Um, I say in Australia because that's where he lives. Um, but wherever he paints, he paints on location. Um, and so this will keep his head warm in Tasmania while he's on location painting trees. So there you go. I, I think two episodes ago I said, I showed the yarn and said, this is what I'm planning to make. And my dad commented saying, can I, can I have that one? Can I claim that one? Is that rude? And I was like, it was for you anyway, but yes, you can. So there you go. Um, and that one I started on the... 21st of October and finished on the 6th of November. Oh, these socks I started on the 26th of September and finished on the 2nd of October. Took a long time to do vanilla socks because I was working on the... What's this called? Go Go Dynamo Shawl. Uh, but muscle burrows I kept churning out because I could do them in meetings and things. All right, the next thing that I finished, I finished only a few days ago. These ones I cast on on the 14th of September and finished on the 11th of November. So these took even longer and they are more socks. Don't know if you can hear the doorbell and the dog barking. Sorry about that, delivery. The next socks. I, yeah, these took about six weeks. New to me pattern and new to me yarn dyer. I love these. I cast them on, I fell in love, made a mistake, they went in the naughty corner for a little bit. And now I actually find it a very, very simple pattern. The, the actual pattern is simple. Reading your knitting was a little bit harder because there are slip, slip stitches and things. But once I figured out how to read it and paid attention to that, it was actually a really easy one to keep going. The yarn is Obsession, Obsession Yarns, um, an Australian yarn dyer, and this colorway is called Enchanted on her base B, 80% merino, 20% nylon, four ply. The socks, the pattern is called Mermaid Avenue. It is by Summerlee Knits. And it is one of her newer patterns. I don't know I had this yarn. I think I knew I had this yarn. And I bought this yarn because it reminded me of a mermaid. And then when I saw that pattern come out, I thought, I just got to get it. So I think I got it while it had the beginning discount on. Um, and yeah, I'm so happy with how this worked out. Um, these socks, vanilla socks, uh, took 63 grams. These ones took 75 grams. I don't know if that was because it's plumper. Um, maybe it had, I think this is 400 meters. This one may have been 420 meters. Um, but definitely the pattern here cinches it in. Um, what do I say? I did make a mistake on these. I used the Vanilla Socks by Cave the Crazy Sock Lady as my sock pattern for pretty much anything. And even if I buy a pattern that has patterning on it, I'll often just take the patterning and put it on top of the vanilla sock pattern and merge the two rather than actually following whatever heel specific instructions they have. This one, because it cinches in, she has you do extra stitches. And so I, at the beginning, thought, do I do my normal one with her pattern and I count for stitches or do I follow the pattern? And I decided to follow the pattern. But then when I got to the heel, I forgot that the pattern wasn't what I'm used to. And so I didn't do the decreases around the heel that I was meant to, but I still did the heel the right size. And that's because I had extra stitches on the front needle and less stitches on the back needle. So 
all I did was I did the heel normally and then I decreased in the gusset, which means that this part here is going to be slightly wider than what the pattern was. Um, but I decreased in the gusset until I had the right amount of stitches on the needle. But it does mean that the base of the foot has slightly less stitches. And I think I have two, I think I have eight stitches more on the top and eight, no, four stitches more on the top and four less on the bottom. And then when I got to the toe, I just flipped those two from each side onto the back needle and did the toe like normal. I don't know if that made sense, but basically I just didn't do the decreases that I was meant to in the pattern. I counted for them in the gusset, centralized the pattern on the toe so that I would have the right amount on each stitches on each needle. Um, yeah, I really, I really, really love these. I love the pattern and how it worked out. I love the yarn and how it worked out. Um, this is my first time using Obsession Yarns and I can say I'm obsessed. If I had access to it, I would keep buying it. It is delightful to knit with. It is, I haven't worn any, obviously. These are a gift, but delightful. Um, yeah, and the pattern color. Oh, uh, if you are interested, because it is a pattern, if I do that, you can see how it works up vanilla, which is also beautiful, but just that pattern in this color. Oh, love it. Um, so like I said, these are a gift. Man, I'm not knitting much for myself at the moment. The, the shawl is mine. Uh, and yeah, they are done. These ones, I just kind of couldn't put them down once I started them. I loved them. Once, not, not once I started them. Once I finished the shawl and wanted something else to work on as a focus knit, that became my focus knit. And so it went really quick. Like I think I finished... I think I did about the foot of one of them in a day. Like it just, it flew by that point. Um, yeah, there you go. The next one that I started, which I started, did I? Yeah, I started it before I finished these ones. I started it the day after, oh, okay. I started it the day I finished these. So these ones got cast off and the next ones got cast on. And that's because these are also going to my sister. Um, these are in a bag that a friend made for me as part of a swap. I don't know if she watches this, but it's exciting. Um, and I am doing these ones on DPNs, double pointed needles. I am just finished the heel turn and ready to pick up the stitches for the gusset. So let me show you. This is also dyed by me. I call it the caterpillar colorway because when it was caked up, it reminded my sister of the very hungry caterpillar. And that might give you an idea of why. Let me get that out of the way. Yeah, um, it is looking more muddy knit up but I actually love it. This pattern is Rhinebeck Rumi's by Cave the Crazy Sock Lady. Um, I am really enjoying it. it. It is a very simple knit, very easy to do. In my mind, this one is a little bit more mindless, which is funny because it took me much longer to get used to this stitch, but once I got used to it, the like it just had more plain knitting in this one. This one has more purling, but it's not difficult. It's very, very simple. Um, but yeah, I love it. This is my first time doing Rhinebeck Rubies and I will definitely be doing it again. The, it's a size medium, 64 stitches, following the pattern exactly because it's her, it's built on her basic pattern, but with a pattern in it. Um, and like I said, yarn dyed by me, four ply, 75, 25. Um, I'm doing them on DPNs. These ones are Chow Goo DPNs and they are 2.5 millimeter DPNs, double pointed needles. Um, I keep my DPNs when I'm using them 
in this little DPN crazy, I guess you'd call it. Um, I made this one myself from Decorator Fabric from Spotlight Australia that they had years ago. I love friends, so it made me happy. Uh, what about it? Yeah, I'm still working. This is my first sock. I will finish, I don't know when, I'll pick up the gusset stitches and knit. The other thing that happened when I finished this one is I started spinning again. And so a lot of my knitting time that I would do in the evening has become my spinning time because that's when the kids aren't around to play with the wheel. Um, and so yeah, I haven't had as much knitting time this week for that and other reasons that I will talk about later. I say that as I look at my four finished objects. Yeah. I haven't had as much spinning time this week. I had a fair bit last week because my son was sick and so I didn't have to do school drive and school drives take hours because he, lives, he goes to school a fair way away. So last week I got a lot of knitting time this week, not so much. All right, my next thing that I started is a nuzzle another muscle burrow and this one is almost finished this one is a child small adult small slash child it's the same size also in yarn i dyed myself gosh guys i feel like a record this is again 75 25 i would call this one a tough sock it's a little bit more um textured scratchy than Things like this one, which is a bit softer. This one has recycled polymid. This one is non-recycled polymid, but I don't know if that makes a difference to the texture or if that's just something different. Um, yeah, so yarn I dyed myself that I was thinking of using for contrast heels and toes. But then my daughter was begging me for a plain pink beanie. She didn't want speckles. She wanted plain pink and a, a light pink, she said. And I looked at buying some online and there was a shop that I found that had some really pretty kind of dusty rose pink. But in the end, I didn't need to buy more yarn. The projects that I was thinking of buying yarn for, I wasn't planning to start anytime soon and I didn't want to buy just a single skein and pay for shipping for a single skein. But then I found this one and I asked her if this was okay and she said, yes, mum, I love it. So I caked it up and cast on the muscle borough. And I have just started the decreases, like I've done double check two two decreases like just started um, I was knitting on it during my polish class this morning and then I stopped and just pulled out all of my fiber so I could tell my teacher about fiber in polish which is very difficult because I'm still learning all the words um, and then I changed to my next project because I didn't want to do decreases while I was reading polish I can read while I knit and I can read polish while I knit but I can't read polish and do decreases too much <laughs> um, i will say child small sorry child adult small is significantly less knitting than an adult large that i've been doing um i mean it has less stitches in the round but also it's you know a few inches shorter and so yeah i finished this much much quicker in fact i started it Okay, I started on the 6th of November and I will finish this today. Today is the 14th of November, I believe. Um, it is Thursday. Yeah, it's Thursday and it's afternoon. It's 10 past 1. Um, yeah, so I'll finish this one today and I will start the next one today as well. Um, what to say about that? Oh, I do muscle borough. I do them on three millimeter for fingering weight. I do the increases and decreases on a fixed circular. This is 40 inch, I believe. No, 36 inch, 80 centimeters. Um, and I do the body of it on 40 centimeter, 16 inch. And so when I'm doing most of it, I'm just knitting around without doing the magic loop. The magic loop is just for when it starts getting smaller. So that one is really close to being finished. Um, and the next one that I'm gonna cast on will be this. 
This I'm pretty sure is sock yarn. I've seen it in from multiple different companies in this colorway. And so I don't know whether they're all made in the same place and then rebranded or what the deal is, but I've seen this colorway multiple different places, but I got this for two bucks at an op shop in Australia. Um, but I'm gonna turn this into a muscle bra for my son because he loves rainbow. Um, and he was a little bit sad when I told him that it was only five colors. It wasn't a true rainbow. It's red, yellow, green, blue, purple. But he said he would still love it. So I'm going to do this for a muscle bra and I'm going to do half of it in this and then either get a different rainbowish yarn and finish it off in the other color. Um, I do have one that's similar, but instead of pink, it's red. No. I think instead of red, it's orange and instead of purple, it's pink. So if I start in this one and then swap to the other one, then he could choose which way to wear it. He did, he did specifically ask for pink in his beanie. And when I told him that it was only five colors, he was sad. So I think I'll probably do that, but I'm not sure. The other one seems a bit scratchier. Uh, but yeah, that's my next Marcel Barra cast on. And then the last thing I have to show you, there are a few things that if you've been here a while, you've realized I haven't shown. I haven't frogged them. They're just sitting downstairs. I haven't touched them. I have been busy doing other things. Um, this is the last one. I love this. This is a wallop cow. I don't remember the designer, but as I said, um, project page will be linked below, which will have all the information, including the pattern linked. Um, I'm doing this scrappy and I'm doing it for my daughter because I have a rainbow one where every color is kind of a gradient in a rainbow. Um, and I wear it every day when it's this cold and my daughter doesn't have a, or didn't have a scarf. We just got given one from a friend. So she does have one right now, but a few days ago she didn't. And I decided she needed a common is the Polish word cow cow. Um, yeah. So I went and bought, bought, pulled out all of my pink scraps or pinky purple. There's a few bluish ones in here. Let me see. Actually, you know what? I'll put a photo up. I took a photo before I started. I'll put a photo up of them all. Um, and yeah, I'm just doing the wallet cow, except I'm doing the eyelet transition for every single one. And it's designed for 10 gram minis. So I'm just knitting 23 rows of each one, including the eyelet row. Um, and what I did was I think I knit 20 rounds for the first color. When I finish, I'm going to do the eyelet row transition back into the first color and then pick up stitches and do my kitchen and cast off in the plane. Um, the first time I tried to figure out a way to do an eyelet row cast off, and it was just too complicated. Like an eyelet row kitchen a stitch, it was too complicated. So this time I'm just gonna transition back to my first color and do it a plain row of Kitchener and I'll see how that works. I'm also doing this shorter. I'm only doing 13 colors is my plan now. Um, I've done half of it. So this is literally half. Um, in fact, I could stop there and that would be a very cute little cow for my daughter. Should I do that? No, I'll do the two and it can wrap around twice. Um, what am I thinking? I'm doing it shorter so it will only wrap around twice, which means that when I join it, I may put a single twist in it because that means when you put it on, twist it, put it on, it will sit flat without a twist in it. So I'll probably do that. Uh, what about it? These are all scraps. Um, dyed by me, a sock blank dyed by me, Dyed by my daughter. This one is Maximu Yarns. I want to say Abracadabra colorway. Could be wrong there. Um, love, love, love this yarn. I have socks knit in it and I have a little bit left over. And I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I love it. Um, this is Motivira, not just socks. Some of the first sock yarn that I ever bought. And it's from Spotlight Australia for $4 for 50 grams. Crazy. This one is Opal. Um, that I use for a pair of socks for my mum. And this one is White Christmas by Sally Ridgeway, which is an Australian dyer. And I have used these for socks for me and had just a little bit left over. 
Like this is all I have left. If, because I'm using scraps and I didn't weigh them beforehand, if I don't have enough to do my 23 rows, I'll just stop early, change over colors and just have a slightly shorter one. Um, but like, so much fun. Yeah, so I'm really enjoying this. This is also very vanilla, like it's just plain knitting. I'm doing it on four millimeter needles. It's all fingering weight, four millimeter needles. And I wanna say they're 16 inch cords. They're interchangeable, so I actually don't know for certain if it does equal 16 inch, but I think so. I had some, are they even here? Yeah, okay, so I had some 24 inch four millimeter ones and I started on that and it was just too big. And like I had to keep kind of pulling the stitches around so that I could have some to knit. It was too big for the circumference of this. So I went and got my interchangeables and made what I think is 16 inch. It may be 20, but I think it's 16 inch um, to do. And it's working much better. They are fixed interchangeables. I do have some um, like twisty, I don't know what they're called, the ones where the, the join twists. These ones are not that, they are fixed um, cords, but they are interchangeable needles and they're knit pro in their mindfulness set. I got the mindfulness set because they were a good price and I wanted to try them. I'm not, I prefer using Chowgoo fixed circulars, not interchangeables but it is useful for these kinds of situations where I have just a project that I don't make a lot of um, and I need a specific cord length or something to make life easier. It is nice. And like I said, I'm enjoying using them. I think that is all of my projects. Once I finish that pink one, I'm gonna go see if I can find some blue scraps and make a blue one for my son because he does have a scarf, but he doesn't have a cow. All right. There you go, that is all of my current projects. I still have a few things that I'm wanting to get done before Christmas. Um, I'm trying to figure out whether to knit socks for my kids' teachers. Um, I think it would be for five or six of them if I did, and I don't think I'm gonna get that many done by Christmas, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. Um, also, I don't know if they do Christmas presents for teachers here or if they wait until the end of the school year and do end of year presents. So maybe I won't do Christmas socks, but I'll do socks at the end of the year as a thank you. That's maybe a better idea, more practical. Uh, but I do also wanna see if I can get some socks knit for the kids for Christmas. Um, and I wanna give a go knitting mittens. Um, I think I'll probably knit colorwork mittens, although I might find some kind of textured mitten. I have done the world's simplest mitts before, uh, which are DK or worsted. I think maybe they even have a fingering one by Tin Can Knits. And I just found they weren't, um, like they didn't have as much strength in the fabric as I wanted. Maybe it was too loose a fabric. Uh, but I would like to try some kind of color work, stranded color work or textured one just to give it a little bit more grit to the mitts. And I want to make some for my kids and for me Maybe my husband if he wants them. Um, so that will probably be coming up sooner rather than later because we haven't had snow yet in any real way, but we have started having some flurries. Um, so light that you can barely see it, but that does accumulate on a windshield at least. Yeah, so that's coming up. If you have patterns, let me know. I had a look, I have six mitten patterns in my library. Um, and two of them, one's in a magazine and one is free online. I'm interested in, um, the one that's in the magazine, I think is in four ply Shetland. So it's designed in a non superwash wool, but you know, color work, fair isle kind of design. Um, I don't know if they have kid sizes. I didn't check for kid sizes. If you have a knit mittens pattern that matches what I've said, let me know and I will have a look and see if I like it. Um, yeah. Oh, I also, I'll mention this here because I just remembered and I will forget otherwise. Um, 
I will probably do another giveaway when I hit 500 subscribers. I think last I checked it was like 475, so it's getting close. If you have liked what you've seen today so far and you want to um, be part of that, subscribe. Um, come back and keep watching. When we hit 500, I will do another giveaway. I don't know if it'll be next episode or not. Who knows, but get excited. Um, and because it's getting into Christmas time, I'll probably make a project bag and maybe have some Christmas wool or something. Do you know? We'll see. Uh, all right. Now, I'm going to quickly talk about Advents. I love Christmas. I love, love Christmas. I do an Advent for my kids every year that goes through the Bible and has some kind of activities like, you know, watching a movie or making a snow globe out of plasticine in an old jar, different things like that. Um, for myself, I have a yarn advent. Um, me and the same girls who worked on the Stephen West shawls together, uh, we started a advent swap, if you will, where we actually hand dye the yarn. Um, the first year me and my sister did it, we got scraps and swapped our scraps. So we made each other an advent calendar from scraps and we did a friends theme. The following year, uh, all the girls got involved and we did um, a gradient. So we split up a colour wheel. Everyone got a fifth of the colour wheel to dye yarn in and then set it up in the gradient. So we had a beautiful gradient. Um, this year, it'll be a scrappy one. We each picked a movie. So there are six movies represented here because there are six girls, um, six women. And we will, or at least I will watch the movies along with opening the skeins and so they have different names um like everyone's named their skeins according to a colorway um and then there is a main color so there are 25 minis and one main color um and so i'm trying to figure out what i want to do as a project i my two thoughts i'd love to do a wallop cow which is the same one that i'm doing for my daughter uh, because it's just a great, great pattern. Uh, very simple. You can do a gradient or you can do scrappy and it looks great because when you wind it around, it's all random anyway. And because I have no idea, like, they're all scrappy. I know that that, but I don't know how scrappy. I don't know whether I'm going to have five colours here that kind of grow together or if every single one is going to be just completely different colours. Uh, I don't know because there's been five different people dyeing them. And I say five because I also dyed the main skein for a friend who doesn't have dyeing equipment or the ability to do that but wanted to join in. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure if I want to do that. My other thought was I'd love to make a jumper. And here's my thinking. If I get a jumper and I knit the main skein for the top part and then I do stripes for the rest, but I hold the fingering weight double with like a, a basic, a, a bare mohair kind of thing, then I will end up with a super warm, cozy Christmas sweater that is crazily striped. I think I'd like that. I'm trying to decide whether I'd like it better if I just did it plain or if I had like one or two stripes of nude yarn, undyed yarn in between the different colours just to kind of separate them by, with your eye. But... I counted a mohair sweater that I had the other day and it had, I think if I did four rows of a colour, two rows of bare yarn, four rows of a colour, two rows of bare, I would end up with 18 colours in the body. And so I could do that and then do the extra colours in the sleeves, but I'd really rather have them all in the body this time because I did that last time. Some colours only made it to the sleeves and I just, I want the whole gradient there. So. My question is, do I do it without the bare yard in between, in which case I could get all of the colours in, or do I do it into a dress, have like a tunic where I have the main colour and then have a bit more of the colours and go into a dress. I think I'd still have enough to do a wallop cowl out of it as well. I like the idea of a tunic, but again, I don't know what the colours are going to be. And I don't know whether it's going to be like an in-your-face Christmas dress that I can only wear at Christmas time. I mean, 
let's be real, in Poland, I would be wearing this around Christmas time anyway because it would be warm. Yeah. What do you think? Dress, jumper, split up the colours, don't split up the colours. Um, if I waited until I knew what all the colours were, it wouldn't be an issue because I could make that decision. But I want to knit along and have the surprise and add it into the project. Um, and because we have the main skein, I'm thinking if I do like all the increases at the top out of that main skein and then go into the stripes and that kind of would give a little bit of um, a place for your eye to rest, maybe. Anyway, that's my thoughts. And then the wallop cowl, um, I could use the leftovers because if I'm only doing a small stripe, I'd have leftovers. But if I wanted to do a dress, maybe I'd have to do bigger stripes and then I wouldn't have leftovers. And then if I did waist shaping, or not waist shaping necessarily, but if I wanted a, like a skirt and have it go out, ooh, that could be really cute. I was just thinking, if I do the main colour at the top, and then I do stripes, but then as I increase stitches around the waist and have a bit of a flare skirt, the stripes would get smaller. And then if I did all the stripes on the body, I could do the sleeves out of the same colour as I did the collar. And if I'm holding it double with the mohair, then I should have enough yarn, even though I only have one ball for it, one skein for it. Let me know your thoughts because I have something in my head. I don't know if it's going to look like that at all. Um, but it could be really fun. All right. Uh, the other thought that I had for Advents was I'd love to do a five Advent. Now, I've had a look and fiber Advents are expensive. One of the things I love about fiber is that generally you can get fiber and it's cheaper than buying yarn. That's not always the case with hand dyed fiber. Um, there are fibre places that it is more expensive to buy the hand dyed fibre than it is to buy their hand dyed yarn. I don't know why, but it is. And I've been looking at Advents and they're just out of my budget. But I did find a Polish place. Um, I live in Poland. I'm from Australia, but I live in Poland. And I found a Polish seller, Expressia Art, I believe is the name. I'll link them below. But they sell... Um, wool. They have a bit of hand dyed, but most of it is not hand dyed. Um, I did not bring any up to show you. I bought some just to see what kind of quality it is, what it felt like. I'm going to have a bit of a play with it. But I'm thinking of getting some either 25, probably 25 gram bags and putting together my own fiber advent. And so I'm trying to figure out whether I should do that scrappy, like put them all in bags and then pick them out randomly, write a number on it, that's the way that I do it. Or whether I should try and do a gradient, I don't know, what do you reckon? Again, give me all of your ideas. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to spin them all every day, but I would love to be able to spin them all every day. It's just probably not going to happen. Uh, yeah, so they are my ideas. I'm also going to probably do a tea, devo uh, tea advent like I did previously. And I also want to do a devotional one, something that I can go through the Bible every day of December. But then that brings me to Vlogmas. I did Vlogmas two years ago and I loved it. And I started it last year and I didn't finish it. December in Australia is a whole other level of crazy because you have all the end of school things, all the end of year things, as well as Christmas. In Poland, Christmas is a lot more sedate because it's winter. Everything slows down. Um, but... If you're in Europe or you're in America, just imagine the craziness of May combined with the craziness of Christmas. That's what it is in Australia because it's, the, it's summer, it's end of year of school as well as Christmas. Um, yeah, I did not have time. It was taken away from my family, so I didn't do it. And I've been debating about doing it this year because, like I said, I loved doing Vlogmas. But I don't know if it's going to work again. There are magical things that I would love to vlog about and share with about Christmas here in Poland, about December here in Poland, uh, but committing to it every day I don't think is going to work. We're also going on a holiday as a family in that time. I will be going to a yarn show, which again would be great to show you, uh, but it will be in the middle of a holiday and so I won't have the ability to edit any vlogs at that point. Um, yeah, 
So I've decided not to do Vlogmas. I may randomly do a vlog and put it up during December because like I said, it's a magical time. But I'm not gonna do Vlogmas. I'm not gonna do daily vlogs. I will try and post what I'm working on daily, like opening advents and what I'm working on on Instagram. So if you follow me over there, Kirsty Knits and Sorrows, it's linked down below. Um, and you're interested in seeing that, go follow me on Instagram. When I record normal podcasts, I will obviously show what I'm working on with Advent. I won't go back and be like, and this was day one, and this was day two. Um, especially with spinning, that's not going to work. But I will show whatever projects I'm working on, and you'll be able to see the progression. Um, and in that, I will show you, like I'll tell you what movie things are from and things like that. Having said that, I have found a new to me podcaster. Her name is Angela and she, her channel is Yarn and Yarns and I will link her below. And I find her delightful. I found her, uh, I got a supported spindle for my birthday and I wanted to know how to use it. Didn't come as naturally to me as drop spindling did, uh, but I found one of her videos about it. And I watched that and then I watched a few more of her videos and it was while I was practicing drop spindling so it was just kind of on in the background and man I got hooked I've been going back and watching a lot of her older videos because I'm just so enjoying it she has it's a little bit more scattered in that she doesn't sit down and have a this is everything I'm making all the time she'll have some roundups of what she's been making she'll have some roundups of what she's been spinning um, she'll have vlogs that follow a project from beginning to end, even if it's, you know, over a year, she'll like kind of vlog along the way and then put it together in one video. Um, but one of the things she does, she calls it 12 cast ons and every year she casts on 12 things. Um, sometimes it's 12 things one a day. Um, but basically between Christmas Eve and the end of January, she casts on 12 new projects. Um, and they're just things that she works on for, well, until they're done or she frogs them. Uh, but basically she, she says she sets up her year of making by casting on 12 things at the beginning. And I think that's a great idea. I am getting so excited at this thought of casting on 12 new things. Um, and so instead of doing Vlogmas in the lead up to Christmas, which is always very busy and we'll have holidays and sorts of things happening then, I'm going to do a 12 cast ons of Christmas vlog that happen on the 12 days of Christmas, which I don't know if that starts on Christmas day or on Boxing Day, but I'm going to start on Boxing Day. And so if I start on Boxing Day, I don't know if that goes to January 6th, which is officially the last day of the 12 days of Christmas or if we'll go to the 7th because I haven't looked at the calendar. I'm just telling you what I'm planning. Um, but I will start on the Boxing Day, December 26th, and I will do a vlog every day for 12 days, and every day will be about something that I'm casting on. So it won't necessarily have the family stuff that other vlogs have had, but it will be 12 cast-ons of Christmas. And I am excited. Um, part of Angela's rationale for doing this was that she gets a lot of patterns and she has a lot of yarn and she just doesn't start the things because she gets distracted. I know what that's like. I have a lot of things that I bought patterns for because I wanted to make them and the pattern was on sale or I have bought yarn for and I've just not got around to starting them. In fact, when I decided that I would probably do 12 casts on, cast ons, I thought I'll make a list of the projects that I have waiting um, with the yarn and the patterns ready and the things that I have patterns for and could probably pull yarn for. Um, it's a bit of a mix, but there's 36 things I think in total. Most of them I have already bought the pattern. Some of them I already have the yarn picked out. So I wrote them all down. That's what this list is. And I went through and I dotted the ones that I was like, these I really, really, really just want to start. Even if they don't get worked on very much, I just want to start them and have them on the needles so I can pick them up and work on them occasionally. And that was 10. Yeah, so eight of them are completely ready. One of them 
I am almost finished spinning the yarn for what I hope will be that pattern. And one of them, I want to spin yarn for one of the three yarns in the pattern. Um, but the other yarn I have. So there you go, that's 10 out of 12. Already picked. So for the other ones, I thought maybe I will do a, a random number picker type thing. Yeah, I'm not sure. Would you like to pick? Would you like to pick one of my 12 cast on patterns? There's a couple of ways we could do that. Either I could put a list up and you guys could just comment, These, this is the one I want you to do. Uh, or if you want to pick, you could put down below, hey, I want to pick one. And then when it comes to picking, I could send you the list or I could put them in a rivalry bundle or something and you could go and choose which one and then let me know that way. I don't know. A few different options. But if you would like to pick one, let me know that you would like to pick one and I'll see if I can figure out a way to make that happen. Um, or my other option is I could just number them all and roll a dice and see what I get. I will try and get my project pages, project pages, project bag set up with what I need. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited at the idea of casting on 12 things in 12 days and vlogging about it. So excited. So if you are interested in joining in, I will link Angela's YouTube videos down below, Yarn and Yarns, her YouTube channel. Um, I definitely recommend going and checking her out if you want a nice, relaxing podcast to listen to. Um, she has spinning, a little bit of weaving, knitting, a little bit of crocheting, but just delightful use of colour, lots of colour work, lots of different interesting things to watch there. Um, yeah, so go check her out. If you're interested in joining the 12 Cast Ons, then please join me here. But also you can go join Angela um, when she does hers as well. And yeah, let me know if that's something that you think is utterly crazy. If it's something that you would love to join in on. I have a couple of friends who I know will think it's utterly crazy. But also they would say it's utterly crazy, but it's very Kirsty. So that is what I'm going to do. Instead of Vlogmas, I'm going to do 12 cast-ons of Christmas. Yeah. So excited. Um, and like I said, most of it I already have the yarn for and the pattern for. If I need to buy either yarn or pattern for those final two, I'll do that. That's not a problem. Um, but yeah, I'm just excited that I'm going to... Oh! I just thought of one that I didn't put down here and I can't believe I didn't put it down here. All right. Well, that might mean that I have 11 chosen and just one for a random. So that's where I'm at with Vlogmas. And that is, I'm pretty sure all of the knitting content. I am going to talk a little bit about mending and life stuff, but if you're just here for knitting, thank you for joining me. All right. Life. I have been cleaning. It is starting to get cold every morning. My car is frosted over. And so I need to put on car tires, uh, sorry, winter tires. And I needed to get a scrapey thing for the window because I've been using an egg flip to scrape the windows. And that works if it's not very hard, but if it's hard, it hasn't been working um, until it's melted a little bit. So I've bought, we've got winter tires. I've bought a car jack and tire iron, which should be here today and I can change them over um, and I've bought a scrapey thing for the windows. It is cold. It is cold, cold, cold. But part of that is we have a garage and we want to park the car in the garage, but the garage is full of other things. And so the last few days I've been cleaning the garage out. Uh, one of the shelves we noticed was starting to sag and one of the support beams had popped out. So we fixed that. Um, it's not sagging anymore, but we are still trying to clear the floor of the garage so that we can fit a car into there. Part of the problem is we have a lot of kids' toys that our kids have grown out of that have been stored in the garage. Um, and we have a lot of clothes as well that some were in the garage, but a lot of them were in the attic. And then we found out that they are having a collection where they will actually come to your house and pick up used toys and used clothes so that they can pass them on to people who need them. 
and used linen and towels and things as well. So we did that. And there are five giant garbage bags of clothes and toys sitting outside waiting to be picked up. I don't know if they've already been picked up by now, but when I started this, they were waiting to be picked up. Oh man, that felt so good. So we have so much more room in the garage. I went through all of the kids' toys that had been stored there. And we now have one tiny box of toys that are being stored for our kids that will rotate out, mostly stuffed toys. Um, and we have a box of toys for younger kids that we will keep for if we have babies come visit or something. Um, but for the most part, they're all gone. And it feels great. I've also been cleaning and trying to get the house back together after sickness. And my husband is still not feeling 100%, but I'm better and so I'm hitting the house with vengeance. I would normally record this on Tuesday and today's Thursday and that's because Tuesday I looked at the house and said I can't record, I just need to clean. And so I did that and I'm so glad I did, but I'm also glad to be here with you recording today. Um, what else? We went away last weekend with some friends. We went to Zivitz, which is another town in Poland. We stayed in a house that was just up. It was basically on the lake, but we couldn't see the lake from where we were staying. It was covered by trees. Uh, but yeah, it was a beautiful location. It was very cold, but it was really fun to get away with friends and just have some time together. We, mini we visited a mini zoo, which um, is basically a, a hobby farm, but they did have a wallaby and emus um, and deer as well. Uh, not our kids. My daughter tried to ride a pony and she freaked out, but some friends of ours, their kids rode the pony. Um, we got to feed some animals. They had a cow called Hortensia, which I thought was the best name ever. And yeah, we just had a really fun time with our friends at the farm. I went out for lunch afterwards at, um, I think it was called Rodzinna Kuchnik, Kuchnik Rodzinna Krulik. Um, so the restaurant for family cow, the family cow restaurant, family restaurant, cows, four cows. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how you would translate that, but restaurant or kitchen, family, cow are the three words. Decline them as you will. Uh, and it was delightful. The food was delicious. There was a little playroom for the kids to play in while we waited for the food, which really helped. Um, yeah, it was just a delightful, delightful weekend. Uh, and I had a friend drive, so most of the muscle borough was knit in the car, in the dark, while I was while my friend was driving the car. Uh, we we carpooled with a friend, with another family, and so we had the girls in one car with the kids, and the men in the other car with the animals. We brought our dog, and they brought their cat, and they got along all right. Uh, and then the last thing I just wanted to mention was mending because I am making a lot of stuff and I do make a lot of stuff and I really enjoy making a lot of stuff, but sometimes stuff gets broken like the sea glass sweater that is still waiting to be mended. Uh, I knit this jumper, did I put it on? Oh, no, I put it away. Um, I knit a jumper for my son, the Into the Woods sweater, and he pulled a thread and I thought that it had broken and I'd need to actually sew in the ends, but I just looked at it before this and realized that, no, it was just pulled and I was able to shimmy it back in and it's wearable again. Um, my husband has a wool sweater, not that I made, but a bought wool sweater that has worn through at the elbows and another sweater that I did make that has worn through the elbows. And so I'm in the process of patching them so that he can wear them again. Um, and so I was just thinking about this recently because I love creating new things, but I also enjoy mending and mending creatively. Um, I will put a photo up here. My son tore his favorite shirt the other day, and I think it's his favorite shirt because it has colors and a pocket, uh, but he said it was his favorite shirt. He was really sad that he tore it. I was like, it's just gonna have to go in the bin, mate. And it had like some holes in it as well. Like it wasn't just the tear, it was, wearing thin and it was already getting too short for him. Um, but then I found this fabric that I used to mend it and I decided to chop off the bottom, which had quite a few holes as well as most of the tear to incorporate the tear, to create that kind of peephole for the orange 
ghost, if you want to, I don't know if it's a ghost, but the orange thing to peek through. Um, and then I just did zigzag stitch with a bit of fabric behind it to reinforce it over the little holes. So he has some random zigzags over it, but the, the focus becomes that bottom. And I ended up being able to extend it so it now fits him and will fit him for longer because he's tall. He's not wide, he's just very tall for his age. Um, or at least his torso is very tall for his age. Um, so creating extra length there really helped. And I really enjoyed doing that. And doing machine applique to fix things is really simple. I did the same thing or a similar thing for my daughter's dress. She just had a hole in it and I just cut out uh, a motif. And then I sewed that onto the dress because the pants had worn through at the knee. And so I'm starting to, rather than throw out their clothes, if there's something that they like or a still usable fabric, to use those to mend other clothes that they're wearing through. Um, or using some of my new fabric to mend clothes that they're wearing through. Yeah. So I just wanted to mention that because I don't know, there are some people I know who are very into mending and very into saving everything. Uh, and then there are people who are like, no, it's got a hole in it and throwing it in the bin. And there are seasons of my life that I've done both. I just broke my pen. Um, but right now I'm trying to be more mindful. Obviously clothes that are still good, I'm passing on to other people. But if the kids are breaking something, I'm starting to think, can I mend it? Is it worth mending it? Sometimes the answer is no, but sometimes the answer is yes. Um, and approaching that for clothes as well. So I'm making lots of new things, yes. But I'm also starting to find joy in mending again. Uh, so yeah, let me know. Is mending something that you do? Do you do it for knits but not for other things? Do you not do it at all? Um, I have some socks that I put aside to mend that I'm just not sure I'm going to. But I may frog them and take the yarn back. We'll see. Um, they did not have nylon and they wore through very quickly. And it's not worth mending them because they will just keep wearing through. All right, well, that's all I've got today. Thank you so much for joining me. If you haven't already, um, subscribe so that you can see future videos. Uh, let me know your thoughts about 12 cast ons, about mending. Let me know what you're working on as well because I love to read about what you're doing and what you're working on. And I will see you next time. How are you making?